Hey guys, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. This is Dustin Lucas, and today I want to talk to you about how to correct that lens distortion just using Lightroom. Uh, let's start by opening up an image, specifically one that has um, a few different elements of distortion going on. In, it. Um, in the article, I sort of talked about pin cushion, um, and sort of I wanted to start off with, with that type of distortion, um, mostly because that's found in tele, uh, telephoto lenses, and it's where you start to have a pull from the center and it seems like it's going back away from you, um, back into the photograph. And with a photo like this is what we have in front of us, we have two kind of elements going on. We have some uh, barreling distortion, which uh, you start to see the center, um, it starts to sort of bend outward um, and these, these curves start to bend and it almost looks like the, the photo is bulging outward instead of pushing inward. Um, and sort of fixing that, um, just using lens corrections, let's talk about just uh, just fixing that starting off. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm in the basic panel. Um, and the biggest thing that you're noticing is you just have these checked um, options here. Um, and in, in adding these to, uh, to your lens correction, it sort of does auto adjustments for you. But before we start out with that, to see what the distortion is actually doing to this photograph, what we need to see is a grid. Um, and by accessing that, you can go up to the very top and go to View, Loop Overlay, and click on Grid. Now, once you've, once you've selected that for View, you can use Option Command O to remove it and to add it. Another great feature is by holding the Command button, you can take your cursor up to the grid here and you can drag to the right to make it larger or drag to the left to make it smaller. I like to make the I like to make this uh, this grid quite large so I can sort of travel with the same same sort of line when I'm when I'm seeing the distortion. Um, I feel like when the grid's too small it's really hard to tell where your lines are at. So kind of finding a happy medium. Um, I'm gonna stick with right about there. We can always change that. Also, the opacity you can increase as well um, and really allow the, the grid to prevail uh, in the photograph. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start clicking these different options in the basic panel. First, I'm going to click Enable Profile Corrections. And what's fantastic about this is, is since I'm using a Nikon lens um, with my Nikon camera, it's automatically going to assign, um, assign a lens with that. Um, We'll get into specific profiles and, and things like that afterwards. But first in the basic panel, what you want to do is you want to check um, these different options that you're looking for. Another one that it'll do is automatically remove chromatic aberration. I'm going to go ahead and check that. And again, we'll go back and check to see if there's any purple or green hues um, at the edge of the photo where all that sort of aberration and all the fringing is happen happening. Um, Constrain crop. Uh, like I said in the article, it's, it's a fantastic tool when you're just leveling the photograph um, or another term, straightening. Um, the great thing about that is it'll twist your photograph for the horizon line. Um, like if I click level here, um, photos not really moving too much. It's pretty, it's, you know, pretty close to level. And if I hit constrain crop, it's not really doing too much for me. However, once I start moving into some of these other options, say we're going to go back to off. And now I'm going to go, now let's say I want to fix, um, let's do the auto adjustment, which is going to fix, it's going to try and fix the vertical horizon line. Um, it's going to try and fix this horizontal line. Um, excuse me, the, the straightening here. It's not going to be doing horizontal straightening. So I'm going to go ahead and hit auto. And what you see is, is it cropped, it cropped my subject out. And I can go into the crop, of course, and adjust this um, by clicking R. And as you see, what it did is it restrained it to the edges and sort of took the same scale as the photograph and cropped it down. Well, I don't want my subject cut in half. So constrained crop really doesn't do, um, doesn't really save me any time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and reset my crop. And I'm going to go back to lens correction. Leaving this constrained crop, now you start to have what I call negative space and this dead space here. We can always crop afterwards. But we definitely don't want to let Lightroom crop for us. So leaving constrained crop is not, um, off is a, uh, is, a, is, a, is a good idea when you're working with um, fixing these, these vertical lines. Well, if you notice, clicking auto, it's not really changing. Um, it's not really giving me that, that fix that I need on my vertical line. So I'm going to go down um, to level, of course. Um, and as you see, it went back to it's, it's distorted, really, um, this perspective distortion that we want to fix. I'm going to go to vertical. I think vertical does a pretty good job. Um, what, I, what I'm kind of noticing here is the lines, the lines are definitely straight, which is great. 
Um, that's the first thing I'm looking at, these vertical lines. However, I'm kind of looking at the distortion of the building. I'm seeing the peak here in this, um, in this sort of uh, cell here. And I'll, what I want to do is I'm going to make, make this grid a little bit larger so you're seeing that. It's much simpler to see. Um, and the difference is actually even more subtle now. Um, but what you're seeing is, is in the middle of the cell, this, this peak of the building here, the corner, as well as this one, it's a little bit lower. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hit full. And as you see, what it does is it twists this other end up a little bit more, maybe a little bit too much. And so um, what we're going to do now, I think that I'm going to stick with full. Full usually works well for me um, in getting in that. And then once you're, once you're looking at, say, this grid, and it's getting pretty close, we're looking between vertical, um, vertical and full is we're going to go to, uh, specifically we're going to go to profile. Um, and turning this on and off, you're going to see that barrel distortion just disappear. Um, and it's, it's showing the make of my lens as Nikon. It's showing the model as um, the 24-120, which in fact uh, is specifically the right lens. Let's go here to metadata. So we have the 24 to 120. Um, so that's right. And it's automatically going to save this profile, um, the Adobe profile for this lens, which is great. So every time I'm, I do lens correction and I check this option in the basic panel, it's going to automatically assign, assign that profile. And what I can do is if, I, um, you know, if I'm wanting to start doing custom, custom effects, what I like to do is crop, crop the image um, and get rid of this white space. So that way you can see, uh, see the image closer up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to crop. That's hitting my R key, and I'm just going to drag in right to the edge of where the photo starts on both sides. And as you see, as I'm cropping, I don't have the original ratio. See how it's cropping in? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold Shift while bringing in the crop. So that way it keeps our scale the same. You can always change the scale later. I like to keep it the way that four by three scale that the camera sort of shot. And I'm going to look for a little bit of symmetry. So I'm going to clip this left side about the same as the right. So we can have a little bit of symmetry. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. The great thing about Lightroom is I can always go back and fix that crop. Um, you know, you're not going to have a, a solidified image until you export it out completely. So that's, a, that's the nice thing about Lightroom. Um, so moving down into the profile, we have this taken care of. So what you can do is you can start to um, fix some of this distortion if you're finding that the image still has, as it slowly catches up here. So you can start to add or remove some of that barrel distortion. I think the profile did a pretty good job with that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with some of this vignette distortion. Um, and what's kind of funny is, uh, you know, a lot of styles and a lot of, a lot of photographers add a vignette to their photograph, almost adding that distortion to sort of to zero in or to give you a sort of uh, a clear direction to your subject or towards the middle of the photograph. And that's fine. Um, you know, that's totally a style um, preference. But what I can do is if I drag the values higher, it's going to remove that vignette. And to the left, it's going to sort of not so much enhance it, but it's going to um, allow it to come back into the photo just a little bit more but it's not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of changes so I'm just gonna put it up to 110 just so it kind of lightens up my corners here a little bit I think it's getting a little bit dark on these edges so I'm just gonna brighten it up a bit that looks good now what we want to do is we want to remove our grid so we can start looking at that chromatic aberration so I'm gonna hit my option command O and what I want to do is I want to zoom into these corners um, and you probably want to get in pretty close. This is at 300%, um, seeing it start to pixelate. And something, too, when you have sharpening turned on, which I do, with sharpening turned on, it's really going to enhance this edge. And it's probably going to be very difficult for me to get rid of this, this, this sort of hay. So when I turn this off, what you're going to notice is this goes to a sort of greenish cyan look. And I want to use my little color picker to show you um, the edge of this the sky is not supposed to have this green tone in it. I mean, it's going to have cyans and blues and probably some magentas, depending on time of day and how the clouds are, how the clouds are reflecting the sun. But this green edge here 
Um, this issue is that on these sharp edges of the building where it meets this high contrast, so we have this dark area here, meaning um, very sort of dark, under underexposed area uh, originally in the shot, and then you have this bright, bright sky. It's a high contrast area, and so it, it start to have this fringing, and specifically green fringing um, is what's what's happening for me. What you can do with this picker um, is click. And see what's going to do is automatically going to um, start to adjust my the purple fringe and add all this green. Well, um, I use the the picker mostly just to see what colors poking out at me if I'm not seeing it right away. Um, and going around the photo, you're going to find different um, you know different amounts of green for sure. There's definitely a, a more intense green here. There's not so much there. Some of the photos might actually have a purple tint, which we're finding purple right there, which is uh you know. A little alarming that we have green and purple, but the fantastic thing about chromatic aberration is that we can start to affect that. Well, what I like to do is, in order to move the, in, more, in order to move, remove this green, what I like to do is put the purple fringe in the middle. And so I keep taking my picker and I put it back over top of that. And so it's staying, it's staying the same. I haven't done anything. I haven't added any sort of color hue to that, to that area. But what I want to do is I want to add some magenta. And in doing that, still stuck at the green, and that's fine. And I'm going to drag to my blue. It's starting to turn green. Let's drag this back. I'll leave that in the center. What we're doing is, is we're looking for a way to sort of cast out, completely cast out this green hue. Um, it's still pretty present there. Um, let's turning this on, of course. Now you're seeing that completely removed. Now what we want to do is let's see how we can get rid of and see how this has sort of gone back to its original color as well as that. And let's go down and see what that purple, that little purple spot I remember. Um, it's blue. It got a little bit better. Let's see the difference. Let's turn it off. Uh, it's not changing too much, um, but there is that, there is a little bit of purple in there. And what I can do is and sort of and it becomes a balance between these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the green amount and put it halfway and I'm going to see what that see what that gives me. So it's some of that green, a little bit of the green's coming back. If I add blue, it, start, it starts to bring in too much and I get automatically just get that glowing flare. It's getting okay. I think I'm going to turn the green down quite a bit. So we're just turning it on and turning it off. As you see, um, I still kind of have this this haloing, this white halo. And sometimes uh, you definitely have to, uh, you know, sort of clone that edge out because you have sort of missing color in there. It's not going to allow me, um, you know, to fix that. Of course, with my detail panel turned off, it's not as apparent. Um, but as you zoom out starts to almost have this glowing edge and as I start to do HDR effects and sharpening it's just gonna look it's gonna look pretty terrible. So in getting that out that might require um, doing some clone brush work in Photoshop. Um, but the chromatic aberration this tool here will um, does a, a really a really good job of at least removing that cast. So we started out with um, the green edge here. But you're seeing the green cast there turning it on and that's completely removed. You have the sky going right into this little bit of a like sort of a glowing white haze and right to the building. Now, there definitely are other programs, you know, for chromatic aberration, and definitely spend a lot more time on this image. And you know, for, I want to move on. Um, in a future article, I'll definitely definitely attack a more advanced, more advanced editing of chromatic aberration and sort of fixing um, fixing this haze in sort of a two two step process. Um, the last section in lens corrections, you have the manual, uh, the manual section. Um, what's actually great is you notice that a grid automatically appears over the image as I'm starting to, to work with these, which I really like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out and putting my grid on. It kind of you know basically just stays the same either way. Um, but what you can do is you can start to do horizontal and vertical distortion, um, and I can start to add. So what's going to start doing is like more like keystoning. See, is it's it's dropping the bat the bottom out. I'm going to put that back to zero. 
so I don't think I need to fix that. Um, in Lightroom, let's see here. Let's see if we can if we can get this um, to fix without doing a skew or um, a, tra a transformation completely. I don't think it's going to let us. I think it's going to let us skew this quite perfectly the way we want. And if you are a stickler for um, absolute straight lines, which I am, um, this would be a point where I would take this photograph and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take it into Photoshop real quick just so I can get that line, that line to fix out. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop real quick. There's definitely nothing wrong using with using Photoshop, you know, for fine tuning and an image you're going to print large, you know, and you want it to, you know, with an image like this, I, you know, I'd be removing or definitely remove my speed light, even out my, you know, my sort of flash and my light source here, um, darken and brighten some of these areas. But with this photo here, what we want to do is we can take this, we're going to transform it, but first let's unlock our layer. I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to skew. Before I do that, I want to set up my ruler and I want to I want to put I want to put some lines up. And this is a really great technique in order to get in order for you to get all of your sort of line everything sort of lined up. Um, putting a line there, um, we could put I like to put them um, basically where you have all of your horizontal lines. I think it's just a, a great great way to just line everything up. As so you can see, it needs to shift up in this corner. Um, where it's lined up. It's a great, great tool. You can have some some center lines too if you want. I mean, for your vertical fix, this isn't. I won't really do too much, but if it's a vertical line, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I want to hold Shift, and I'm literally just going to drag in its upper right hand corner. And as you see, my right hand, my left hand side is staying the same, and just the right hand side is pivoting up. And so what that does is that gives me just stretches the top here. So now I have you know absolute perfect uh, symmetry. The skew is gone. Didn't you know? It didn't affect my subject too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my guides out so you can see this. So now, completing our image, that leaves us as the result. So from there, I'm gonna save and then quit Photoshop. And now I have my edited image here, which is quite perfect in the corners here, versus where I was there, just slightly off. Not excuse me, going this way, um, here versus here, and it's just it's that little bit of difference. But these are the these are the details that you really want to start thinking about um, when printing large images, when you're showing images for print comp. And these these skewed lines, these little bit of uh, these little tips and tricks are they they go a long way. Um, and so if you guys have any questions or um, you know you're in, you are interested in learning more about chromatic aberration, please write into behind the shutter. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And like I said, look out for a future article on that. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in.